Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, today I figured I'd upload another video. It's kind of following up from my last video, ambient occlusion bakes. Now the last video didn't really show you how to do it from high poly to low poly. It was just a video to kind of display mental ray and how to use it in general. Um, you don't have to use a cage with it, but for that process it's more of a scene that you're making in the application itself. It's not really part of the game design workflow unless you make it. So the way to do that is you gotta go and take the mental ray process and mix it in with the process of my normal map video uh, with the other soccer ball that showed you how to bake with projection. So it's a little bit of both. So right here as you can see I already have my low poly set up. I'm not sure why that's uh, my pivots there but we're gonna... Anyway I have that all set up the cage is around both of them. I have uh, high polys right here. Low poly is the one that has the cages projecting because that's going to go around the high poly and take the detail from that and project it onto the low. So basically in essence what's happening is that light's coming out of the high poly model forward off of its faces and if there's no cage there it just keeps going. Okay so nothing's going to happen when you bake it. But if you have a cage there, it bounces off the cage back down, and it acts like the high poly is no longer there after it bounces back, okay? So the computer then looks for the next object that's there when it's coming back in. And if it sees your low poly, it's burning that detail right back onto it. So if that makes sense. So basically, you need to make a little bit of space around your models for it to do that. But you, you need to be as close to the model as possible to get the best detail and the best uh, representation on the UVs of your low poly of the high poly models visuals as possible okay so you want to make sure you set up your UVs you want to make sure you also have smoothing groups set up because if you don't it's gonna look like crap um, and I believe there's another one that's kind of important well anyway the first two are pretty important so make sure that's set up and once you have the high and low poly make sure they're unfrozen and they're visible once that's happening you want to make sure that when you create the uh, cage, the projection, this is basically what happens, and I'll undo it to show you again. So we got the low poly here. All right. You want to make sure the low poly, though, doesn't have any texture. Let's just say this is all white. I, I mean, I can go in here right now and do that, but. Okay, so that's what you want. You want your low poly to be completely blank no texture or anything like that. You can always do a complete map which will help you do all of them at once but you could also also take these things all of them and bring them into Photoshop and layer them and I always do that because it's easier to adjust brightness and certain things I may feel that aren't dark enough without you know going and doing a second bake you can easily edit layers to make it look just the way you want so for now you keep this like a white you do an ambient occlusion keep it a white color and uh, no texture. It will project the detail of the high poly onto it anyway and then you can worry about texturing that later. So for right now that's what I would do. Sharing the same space and now what you want to do for the low poly is this. So this is that wonderful cage I was talking about. So this right here, once you do that you want to click on pick and what I do is I go over right to the list since I already named them I know exactly what to click on that's gonna appear right down here and so now it knows what to project the detail from so once that's done you're gonna open projection click on cage I'm gonna come down here and go to shaded point to point and right here you want to make sure this is reset first always because you never know it might look like it's in its normal spot but it's not just click that, make sure that's done, then go up to push amount. What I do is I click down and I move it slowly with the mouse, or I pre plan exactly what this value is going to be. So, with trial and error, I would have already known that, but I forgot, it's been a while. So, I just kind of come up and I want to make sure that it's engulfing everything else. See how cool that looks? Looks like a, a camouflage effect. <laughs> Anyway, you want to make sure you don't see that effect. You want to make sure everything is out. And that's right there is perfect. So 
since that's done, they're both engulfed in that cage, it's now going to be able to project the detail properly. So next what you're going to do is go up here to render setup. Now you're going to be using mental ray. I'm going to be using the default scale renderer, so I'm going to show you how to do this by default. Okay, So this is what you're probably going to see normally. All right, and everything, all the settings will change. So you want to make sure you go to Mental Ray. So that's set up. You can come back up here. And make sure your output size matches your monitor size or whatever you're going for. I have HDTV, obviously, most of us do. I'm going with that. Um, quality, it's the lowest that it can possibly be. I bump this up to the max 20. This, I believe, was 1 to 4 or 1 to 16. I bumped it up to 128. I read an article somewhere why it was important. Don't have it on top of my head right now, but that's why I went about that high. I could probably go down to 64 or something like that and be okay, but here I make sure it's up to about high. You can really go up to ultra high, but that's like 10,000 rays versus 500s per FG point, which takes a lot longer from what I noticed, so we'll just go with that. Shadow quality can go up to 10. I bring it up to 5. Again, you don't need Hollywood production quality unless you're really, really going all out. Um, you can if you want, but just learn how to optimize everything. So we have all that set up. You just want to make sure of these things here. So that's, that's good. I don't think there's anything we have to mess around with there. Render is all set up. So now you want to go to render to texture. When you come down here, and since I've already set it up, I'll do it again, but you want to go to Add, and this option will show up only when you're using Mental Ray. Any other uh, renderer, this isn't going to show up. You click on that, and you want to go down to the obviously save where you know you're going to find it again. I go to 2048. I believe you can go higher, um, but I haven't tried it yet, so I just kind of go to the max there. Again, Samples. The default I go to 64, 128. The spread I go to 1. And I think that's it. So basically, what's going to happen after if I were to click render, it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite, you know, blah, 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 continue. And I'm not going to do that because I already have it saved. Um, basically, what's going to happen, it does the whole baking process. It's going to take another like. 40 minutes because I do it on high quality um, and then after that's done you put it into the texture so I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like uh, under the material editor and how I set it up so we'll just not do that right now so let me close off the high poly we'll take off the projection because we pretty much just showed you how to do that and what's going to happen is where is that texture I had set up Good old 3ds Max. All right, um, that's the ambient occlusion. I believe I have that a specular bump. Material the same and resist in the scene. Do you want to replace it? All right, so there we go. So this is going to have all of that. And the reason why you see it like this versus that is that there's different settings I could make this show this as it is. Uh, but what I did in this viewport to make this even visible. If I right clicked on this where you see shaded, realistic, whatever. You come down to materials and realistic materials with maps. You have to do this every time. Um, not every single time in the same session, but when you start it up and want to see it, I believe that's what you have to do. There might be an option to do it, to keep it like this at all times. Pretty sure there is. I just haven't figured it out yet. So that right there will do that. And again, without it, as you can see, it turned checker there. It's rendering it quickly in and out. So that's normally what it is, and this with the edge faces you can clearly see is a normal primitive sphere, okay? And otherwise it would be following every corner and things like that. So that's the ambient occlusion there. Um, you can take that and basically, like I said, move it into Photoshop. Whoops, I accidentally put the uh, wrong material on that. Oh. 
and when you bring it into Photoshop again you can layer the ambient occlusion you can layer uh, like height maps or things like that to get more of an effect a darker effect if you need to and to uh, hand paint it if that's what you do uh, some people are better at that than using a generator sometimes you do it anyway in another program so it really doesn't matter um, but that's the effect of an ambient inclusion bake using the baking process that you would for a normal uh, but using mental ray instead this way you're gonna have way better bakes you're gonna have way more realistic versions of your bakes and most of us know how to optimize texture so we'll still be able to retain the detail uh, by dropping down file size things like that and other methods um, but again let me show you in Photoshop real quickly you can see the normal map that I have here here's the ambient occlusion kinda of zoom in so to me this wasn't dark enough and I noticed another thing is that for you to get a better ambient occlusion bake and this works for the last method I showed you as well you want to make sure that you have a flat plane underneath your model uh, so for instance if I were to hide the high poly here go up here I make a, a simple plane and I'll make it white too and there's a reason why I go into my snaps because I like to have a big enough plane kinda keep it leveled here go back to white figured that might keep it that way um, now you could either do this or you can do a bowl method where you would take like again a primitive sphere this and um, cut it in half across and the bowl bottom part here would be around this but you'd want to make sure the top of your model is below the top of that bowl because all the white around that bowl is going to you know balance out while it's baking the ambient inclusion and all the shadows because that is going to act like ambient light around the object you know what I'm saying so make sure that's white just like everything else and it will help with it the plane you can move it up and down just like the bowl a little bit uh, it will affect it if it goes over the top I believe but if you keep it in the middle like say you drop the model lower into the bowl or with the plane the plane came up closer to your object it's gonna have more shadows and things to bake because it's gonna have more of a, a resistance from one surface to another even though they're the same colors it will distribute it evenly across both so that's another way to keep you know keep in mind how to bake your AOs because that will affect it um, so yeah that's set up that way you got all that and then again you could bring these in you know duplicate layers mess around with them you know color burn darken think that you can get even darker uh, recess so curvatures you know make it lighter and all used in layers on your texture so if you have another texture you just put it underneath or wherever and bam the color and everything else you did will be in the same dimensions as all this so that's what another reason why you want to bake in a 3d application with your UV set up already because then everything else just is so much easier to uh, to do in your your pipeline so anyway thanks for watching I hope that's uh, pretty well explained for those who are wondering um, it's one of those things that I was wondering myself and just started messing with a few days ago and got it to work so last videos information is still true but that's only for the process of a single model that does not need to be projected from one to another that will just be you know baked in that one one spot um, I believe mental ray already has a skylight enabled but you can use another one in a projection method um, it may not be with mental ray I know there's another method you can still do this with like the scale line renderer and maybe like bake a diffuse map with white and shadowing enabled or you can do like a shadows map and it will give you an ambient inclusion but this is the best way that I think will help you in your production to make things look way more realistic and simply run better in your game than uh, you would ever hope for so alright guys gotta go thanks for watching thanks for all the subscribers all the new people thank you uh, supports great and hopefully in the future I'll start doing a lot more and once it takes off well see a lot more videos alright guys have a good one